From portable handhelds to micro arcade machines, My Arcade has released plenty of electronic devices over the years. Currently, if you were to go on their website, you'd find handhelds and our mini arcade machines from Data East, Galaga, Mega Man, Pac Man, Ms. Pac Man, Space Invaders, Street Fighter 2 variations, and even Tetris. They've also done different devices that have featured Contra, Dig Dug, Karate Champ, and there's probably a bunch of others. But on the top of their website, their newest console is the Atari GameStation Pro. That's right, it looks like Atari is back again, whatever that means these days anyways. And this time Atari has joined forces with the My Arcade company to show off their retro games all over again right before the holidays. Originally this system was slated for a summer release date, but it appears that they've opted for a holiday release window instead, which I really don't think is a bad strategy. It might get consumers to make a quick $100 stocking stuffer. So what is the GameStation Pro? The GameStation Pro is a mini game console and it has over 200 games. It includes games from the Atari 2600, Atari 5200, Atari 7800, Atari Arcade, and quote unquote bonus games. At an asking price of $100, you're really paying roughly 50 cents per game. So when you look at it that way, it actually sounds pretty good. Some games I definitely think are worth more than that, while others I really can't form an opinion because I haven't played all of them, but some I just get the feeling that I'm not going to be spending a whole lot of time playing. As far as the catalog of games, there's 82 Atari 2600 games, 7 Atari 5200 games, 10 Atari 7800 games, and 39 arcade titles. So the math adds up to 138 Atari titles. Out of these titles, 100 of those games are multiplayer, so if you've got a buddy, you should be down for a good time. 63 bonus games are also included, and out of the bonus games, 25 of them are multiplayer. So you have 63 bonus games and the 138 Atari titles it equals out to 201 games. So yes, the box isn't lying, it does have over 200 games. Just some thoughts of like, hey, what are the things that like this system really has going for it? Well, one of the first things that it offers is you have safe states, right? Like that's a pretty modern thing. We saw this with the NES Classic, the SNES Classic, the Sega Genesis Mini. Um, you had ways to basically just have save slots for your games. And that that's something that we see within this system. You can save uh, two different slots directly onto the system. And you can also have two more extra save slots through a micro SD card. And that really leads me to my next point. That's probably what a lot of people are going to get the system for is yes, you can add more games to this device through the micro SD card slot. I personally haven't experimented with this myself, but I know that it is possible to load thousands of games onto this thing. So if that is your sort of thing, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to know more about this topic. My favorite thing about this device is their controller, the way that they implemented paddle controllers onto this system. So yes, there's paddle support through these controllers and it works beautifully. So a few years ago, Atari had the Atari VCS that got put out. And when I played Pong on it, I would constantly have issues trying to like recalibrate the game, make sure that it felt right, and the way that it was implemented through their joystick is you'd have to twist the joystick um, in order to activate, like, have the paddle controllers. And it just didn't feel right. Like, no matter what I did, it, it didn't feel right for me. And I think the GameStation Pro, the way that it's done its paddle controllers, is, is probably the best modern variation that I've personally experienced uh, with, with anything that Atari has done in recent years. And so what they did is they have a small little knob that's next to the joystick and it feels just like the, you know, it's a little smaller, right? But it's like, it feels like the 2600. And so I think that the, the way that they implemented their paddle controller and how it feels on this device, they, they haven't beaten it. Um, like this is the best way I think to do it in a modern setup anyways, is, is through something like this. And I think it's great. So I can't say enough about it. I think it's awesome. Um, they also have Xbox One controller support. I don't know all the different controllers that are supported on this device, 
but I know the Xbox One controllers do work. Um, it literally just plug and play. Uh, if you have a USB-C to USB-C cable, um, it'll just work right out of it. And so, yeah, it, it's great. I played Galaxy Gunners with it, had a blast playing with it, and gosh, the Xbox controllers feel great. So if you want like a modern joystick, you do have the option for it. The system itself is also, well, like no duh, it's aesthetically pleasing. It's a small black box with the Atari logo. It's gonna look sharp. You also have three different LED color variations. You have white, like a orangish, peachish color, and rainbow. And it also adds a little extra flair to the system. Maybe having an option to turn off the colors uh, could have been nice, but I think most people are gonna care too much. I think the colors overall look really nice and it'll look great in any entertainment center. Things that I think could have been done better, I'm gonna be a little nitpicky on some of these. The first one is that I, I would have included USB-C cables right out of the box. Um, again, it's a little bit of a reach, but I really prefer using the wired controllers for this device, especially since the wireless functionality requires batteries and you need to have a screwdriver to open up the port to insert the batteries into. And I've, I've used enough devices over the years where I'll put batteries in something and then I forget about it for six months or a year and I get back to it and the batteries are corroded. And, and I'm just, I'm, I'm over using batteries for anything. We, we live in an age where either the controller needs to charge, which for something like this, with it being a cheaper system, I don't expect that. Um, but since you have the ability to use USB-C cables to make it a wired controller, I think that would have been a nice thing to include that in the package. Uh, so that was actually the first thing that I did is right after I unboxed it, I ended up buying a double pack of USB-C cables off of Amazon for $8, plug and play, no problem, and it worked great. Um, that also is nice because then you can also use your Xbox controllers or other controllers that you want to use that have the USB-C functionality. Uh, so I would have just included that right in the box. Um, the other thing is that I don't know how deep this goes, but I know at least for one of the titles, not every title includes save states. Um, so I ended up playing Steel Force. It's one of the bonus arcade titles. And as I was uh, on like level three or four, I wanted to save the game and um, you can't, it won't let you. And um, I think we just live in an age now, I, I know how I play games where I might play for 30 or 40 minute spurts. I might even play while I'm on break at work or something. And it's like, hey, like, I just wanna like, I'm gonna go home real quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play and then I wanna stop playing and then I'll, I'll go back about my day. Whatever that might be, uh, it's kinda just like, hey, I wanna play for a short pocket and then I wanna be done. And if you don't include save states for a game, means that you're gonna have to like sit down and play through the entire game in a session. And um, I think, I think, you know, 15 years ago, um, that was more of a thing. And um, obviously that was that was part of how games were, right? Like you had to beat something in one sitting. Um, if I loaded up Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, I can't get through, uh, even though the game is short, right? It's only like a, a 45 minute game, but like I could get halfway through and stop playing and beat the other half later. Um, well, like I think just that mentality, I think for a lot of people now is shifted where it's, I wanna pick up and play for a few minutes and then I wanna be done and I'll, I'll, I'll play it later. So that's what I would do is I, I would say for like a future update, that'd be something that uh, my arcade should consider is making sure that all of their games across the board have save state functionality. Overall, is this system worth picking up right now, right this second? Um, I would tell you, I'd probably hold off for Thanksgiving week, uh, wait for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Maybe they'll have a little discount off of the $100 $100 isn't like, you know, super crazy asking price for it, but if you can get $10 off or maybe even $15 off, I think that that'd be worth at least considering. And at this point in the game, you've waited long enough. Um, I think that you could wait and get a pretty, you know, decent discount off it um, and at least be worth trying. Um, but ultimately, I think that it's a cool device. I think it's fun. I, I think it's a cool way to reintroduce a younger generation to these older games and again for me i didn't grow up with the atari and so there's a lot of things that i i don't have the rose tinted glasses i i don't have nostalgia for these things because i didn't grow up playing a whole lot of it 
Um, it, it was before my time. I grew up with the Super Nintendo and the N64. So it, it's just a different era of gaming. Um, I wouldn't tell you that a lot of the games have aged terribly well. If I play like Atari Circus, um, I, I know that that's not, it's kind of, you know, throw, throwing people under the bus with that game, but I wouldn't say it's a super great game. <laughs> um, I mean, like, I, I, I'm kind of one and done with that game. But there's some games where like Millipede, Centipede, Pong, I think that they're phenomenal. I would go back and, and I, as I have, I can go back and play those games and have a lot of fun with them. Uh, but I can't say that for every Atari title. There's still a lot of titles that I need to dig into and check out for myself. Um, but if you grew up playing Atari and you're like, hey, I just want to have a dedicated like just device just to quickly plug it in play and have access to these games, I think it's cool. I think it's neat. I think it's worth considering. There's also uh, other Atari compilations, whether if you get like the Atari compilation off of the Switch's eShop or you get the Atari 50th anniversary and you get it off like all different devices. There's lots of ways that you can access Atari titles through like, uh, you don't need to buy another game console necessarily. But if you just want something like, hey, I don't have any of that stuff. I just want to play Atari stuff. This is an easy way to do that. It works well. I think the games work well. I think it's at least worth considering. Those are my thoughts on the system. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Thanks again for watching.